Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining me today to talk about increasing business impact thanks to learning technologies. I wanted to start, just the other day I was thinking about impact and what the kind of impact that we're having as learning professionals. And when you think about it, we really work hard to upskill and train our employees. And when we do that, you know, we're increasing value for the company that we work for. But our, really, our impact is threefold. Not only are we increasing the value for our company that we work for, we're also increasing the value for that employee that themselves, that person, okay, increasing their skill set. And then uh, the third point is that in a global economy, it is critical to have an educated and skilled workforce. So at the same time we're bringing value to that individual and to our company, we're also increasing the value of the competitiveness of our country in a global economy. So I think that's a pretty significant impact that we're having as learning and development individuals. So moving on, what I'd like to cover are the current trends um, in, we're seeing in the industry, the, a learning technology stack model that we've developed, uh, also looking at supporting instructor-led training through learning technologies, and then finishing with the solution and business case. So learning trends is to do more and better with less, and we've been seeing that since the advent of the learning management system 20 plus years ago. Everybody wants to get you know, better and cheaper or lower cost, uh, and the new technologies we have such as you know, gamification, micro-learning, and that type of thing. Um, so the question is, you know, how do we reduce the cost, and then how do we increase the business impact or the return on our investing, inve investment? So for the past 20 some years, the number one reason to invest in a learning management system was to reduce cost, not necessarily to increase learning uh, performance. So we, right now today, and this is a global perspective, about 30% of the dollars invested in learning are going into digital learning, e-learning. About 70% still uh, on a global scale is invested in delivering instructor-led training. So when you look at the return on e-learning, now generally the benefit is lower for e-learning, but the cost is low. So you have a pretty, a pretty decent ROI. For instructor-led training, the return is high, generally expected to be a very you know, um, effective method of training, but the investment is very high. So how do we control those costs? How do we do reduce the cost of instructor-led training? How do we increase the returns? So one of the things that has actually taken place that I thought was kind of interesting is um, the, the, flip, the flipped classroom concept. Is anybody familiar with flipped classroom? Okay, the idea that you're going to have deliver e-learning content, kind of to introduce a topic, then you're going into the classroom in order to, to expand, understand, and, and build on that content, and then you follow up with e-learning afterwards for reinforcement. That made me think, well, this is, you know, everybody's saying, well, this is such a new concept, this is going to be great. But very interestingly, I thought back to many, many, many years ago when I was in university, and I was given a textbook. Well, actually, I had to buy the textbook. In the textbook, we had our syllabus said, on this date, we're covering this topic, and you have to read this chapter. So I would read that chapter in the textbook, my pre-work, and then I would go to the lecture, which we would discuss and, under, you know, it's under deep, have deeper understanding. And then I would follow up, I would have to self-study uh, for an exam, my reinforcement. So just keep in mind, you know, flipped classroom, great idea, it works, increases efficiency, uh, but it's, it's not a new concept. Our professors were doing it many, many years ago. So what are the trends, well, what's happening in the marketplace? The LMS is not the be-all, end-all that they, everybody thought that they were going to be. We're finding that we need to do a lot more, and LMS can't do everything. So what we're seeing is that our audiences are, are changing. As we get into a global economy, where companies are now training their clients, partners, dealers, distributors. Also, we have country-specific requirements in this global economy. And so much more technical training is being required of our learners, right? We have to deliver technical training and new technologies as technology keeps advancing, and we don't want people to become obsolete. And then we have the delivery methods. So, a lot of companies I'm seeing today that were saying many years ago, saying no more ILT and no more classroom training, we're going all the e-learning, it's all going to be in the LMS. What they're finding is that's not getting them where they need to be. So they're actually bringing instructor-led training back 
into, the, into their fold and making that still an integral part. Not as much as they used to do, but they see where it is important, and that's where they're using structure-led training. And then, of course, you've got you know, mobile learning, gamification, and all these other things. And then now we have augmented reality and virtual reality. So about six months ago, I had a, a very interesting experience. I think it was actually a, a very good experience. I don't know if you're familiar with Verizon or Verizon Wireless. It's one of the top two mobile operators in the United States. But I went into one of their retail stores. They have many retail stores throughout the country. I went to one of their retail stores during an armed robbery. There I was, I had a gun to my head, a guy forces me through the door, he's threatening me, telling me he wants the money, and I got an employee on the floor crying. Here I am trying to figure out what the heck am I gonna do, how am I gonna keep her safe, save my life, you know, get this guy out of here, what am I gonna do, right? So all of this, and then I'm having to make these decisions. And I was like, this is amazing. Because this was training, this was virtual reality training. And I was actually feeling it. I was like, I'm never going to forget. To this day, I'm not going to forget that training I went through that Verizon Wireless gives to their store managers how to deal with, with a, an armed robbery. You know, what, are the, what are the things that you do to make? What decisions do you make? And how are you supposed to handle the situation? How are you supposed to keep your employees safe? Give them whatever they want. You know, Just get them out of the store and make sure everybody stays safe. And to me, that was like the best, the best example of virtual reality training and how it can really bring value to us. I thought it was a pretty interesting experience. Speaking of experiences, you know, we want a better learner engagement. So now you're seeing, and you see a number of them around here, learning experience platforms. Okay, giving a, a better uh, learner experience with curated content. You know, content that's coming not just from the L&D department, but content that's coming from, from, you know, from MOOCs and, and YouTube and wherever else you might want to pull content from, but giving that in a, in a, in a learner experience of content curation. Uh, and also having an easy to use platform. Uh, there's a lot of learning management systems out there that were, you know, I heard actually an LMS, we say the LMS is designed for the learner, but I actually heard from somebody who first started developing LMSs about 20 some years ago, that they were really focused on the administrator, not the learner. And then analytics, we want to, we want to do more now with analyzing the information that we have and putting that information together. Uh, understanding where we're spending our money, what is our return, what kind of, you know, what, what's the bang for the buck that we're getting. And there's two ways of looking at that. There's looking at, you know, what am I, you know, how can I in increase my ROI and how can I reduce my costs? How can I increase my effectiveness in my training and how can I reduce my costs? Uh, and then dashboards, being able to see at a glance the status of your training operation and, and for both your users and for your administrators. So this is all changing. So from this, we now have a learning technology stack. And a lot of these things, I'm sure, look familiar to you. Of course, we've got the, the very back office, where we're, we've got a training resource management system, so basically ILT management and a learning record store. So this is more administrator facing. And then we move into where the content's coming from. So the content could be coming from a resource provider, um, which could be, which is more actually, I should say, resource classrooms and that type of thing. Uh, ILT providers, so these are your training companies like Global Knowledge and uh, American Management Association who have developed content and they have trainers. They'll come into your organization and deliver their training for you. Uh, the training marketplace, where you can go out and find training, this uh, information that's aggregated. Content lab libraries like Skillsoft, for example. Uh, CMS and authoring tools, uh, and then the informal content, so you know, YouTube and the, and the like. So then we put that, that, all of that then moves a little bit further uh, into the, the delivery method. So it could be through a smart classroom, a virtual classroom, of course the LMS, and LMS, LMS is not gonna go away. It does some things very, very good, and we we'll keep using it for what it does. Corporate MOOCs, and then your social, mobile, and collaborative learning. So the new piece that's on top now are the learning experience platforms. And they've been gaining a lot of traction, and you probably sat in some other presentations on, from, from LXPs. You know, what's their purpose? And, and you know, to create that better learning experience, to curate the content, um, to help build a learning culture. And at the same time, there's many companies that are building their own entry point to learning through their company website, because they want to create that learning culture in the corporation. As a matter of fact, United Parcel Service, UPS, the guys that drive the brown trucks, um, they actually create a marketing program within L&D. 
because they want to promote and sell their training to their employees to build that corporate learning culture. Uh, and I've actually heard some other people just talk recently about marketing their learning, okay? Building that marketing program, getting people engaged. Uh, you know, doing, doing the banners and the, and the badges and this type of thing, you know, so people are proud and can show off the learning that they've done to build that learning environment. And actually, we really need that. We need people to be open to learning so we can continue to grow you know, economically, grow our personally, uh, you know, company-wise, and then economically in our countries. So now we look at the ecosystem, and this is a little bit, little bit crowded, and that's really just a fraction of what's out there. Um, you know, at, when we look at the back office piece, so we've got you know, training resource management system, of course, training orchestra, <laughs> um, we're there. Uh, and then the learning record store, so we've got uh, learning locker and watershed. And then the training resources, so that, that's, that's quite full. So we were talking about the resource provider, you've got Microtech, Classroom in a Box and such, uh, you know, the DDIs of the, of the world for the training providers, content aggregators, libraries, authoring tools, uh, and formal content. And then, of course, the, the others up, up above. And so all of these really are what I call the middleware. Right uh, in the system. So basically, you know, the content source of content feeding the delivery method, feeding the the point of entry for the learner. So this is actually really, uh, really crowded right now. As of yesterday, uh, learning e-learning industry on their website has 393 learning management systems, 104 authoring tools, and 499 content providers. So you think there's a lot of people here? There's a lot more out there. So you gotta be careful which ones you pick and choose. So then we have, then we have the, LX, the LXPs, Learning Experience Platforms, Degreed, Fuse, EdCast, it's a Thrive here. Uh, there's more coming out of the woodwork. You can see a lot of the LMS vendors now are also creating their own uh, Learning Experience Platform. Uh, Skillsoft created theirs, even though Skillsoft and some total are together. Um, you know, Skillsoft on their own went and created Precipio, which they're integrating with all of the LMSs as well. So that's, there's a lot of growth in there. As a matter of fact, I just saw a presentation from Cornerstone on their learning experience platform. So you're gonna have a lot of options there as well. Uh, interestingly, Josh Burson, I don't know if you're familiar with him, uh, he's quite predominant in the United States, but in a recent article, he was hinting that there might be some vertical integration from the LXPs into some of these other areas. So in the end, we end up with the front office that's focused on the learner. Uh, so delivering both, you know, structure-led e-learning of, you know, many digital learning, as was, that may be a better way to call it, of all the different technologies that are out there. So, instructor-led training is not dead. So, right now, it's still a predominant method of training. And we've got, uh, it represents about 70% of most training budgets globally. Now that can vary, and you know, if you go to some countries it's 95%, if you go to other countries it's 25%, but on a global scale. Um, and 60% of millennials, and I think this is Wayne House who published this, think uh, that ILT is more, more effective than online learning, okay? So based on that, how can training be optimized? So. A training management system, which was at the bottom of that technology stack, okay, which is something the training orchestra does, is basically it's a, a scheduling system. So it's all about optimizing your, the scheduling of your instructors or in your resources. And then you add that, the ability to track costs, manage the costs so you can understand your training budget. And then we want to ma do, manage tasks so that to do this, make sure that everything that has to be done, you know, booking the classroom, notifying the instructor, uh, you know, anything you need to do that has to be done for that event to take place is, is managed and is visible to you. Uh, and then man, you're man, yeah, managing your partners, right? A lot of companies today, probably, I, th I think the number is slightly over 50% of training dollars in a corporation are spent on training clients, dealers, and distributors than spent on training employees. And then a lot of companies today are moving towards charging their clients for that training. So they're monetizing that. It's becoming a profit center instead of a cost center like your typical L&D department. So you want to be able to manage your training as a business and grow that profit center because it's a good source of revenue, but it's also a good source of success for your, for your clients. So how do we do that? We do that with some things such as a dashboard, customized dashboards that give you indicators, seeing those things that you need to have, see in real time, the most important things that you can get to quickly and easily to take care of. 
by being able to allocate the right resource to make sure you have the right person in the right place at the right time, giving you global visibility over their, you know, over your total operation. Managing and see, making sure you don't have resources. You don't want to know how many people I talk to. They're one of the biggest complaints is double booking, but double booking a classroom, double booking an instructor. You know, making sure you don't have conflicts, making sure everything moves smoothly. Tracking the costs. I don't know how many people. How many people know, understanding cost of training is important to them? Okay, a few hands are going up there. That's great. Yeah. So if you understand the cost, if you understand what, if you know what you're spending, you can understand it. You can manage your budget better. And then managing resources. Um, this is an example from a client that actually is managing their, their facilities. The biggest thing I'm seeing today is that we have um, instructor utilization rates are very, very important to a lot of our clients. And we have instructor utilization rates. Typically, when they go and they look, they're finding those utilizations are somewhere around the, around the 50, 55, 60, 65 percent, depending on you know, what the business they're in. Um, but when you go from a 55 percent instructor utilization to an 85 or 90 or 95 percent, which is the target, now you can imagine the cost savings you have. So if you know what your instructors are doing, then you can adjust accordingly and increase the utilization rates. So that's a that's a, a big trend we're seeing in the industry today. All right, and then managing the, the to-do list, the task list I mentioned before, is what we call a milestone. So making sure that everything is taken care of for all of the, all of the, um, everything you need to do for a session. So this is really kind of a, a, an overview of those, those things that you can do at the bottom of the technology stack when you're managing the instructor-led side, where 70% of your training dollars are spent. So any, any small percentage you save there is quite significant that you'll have to reinvest in other initiatives, okay? whether it be you know, gamification or credentialing or that type of thing, which all bring value. And so an example in the insurance industry is a company about 12,000 employees, hundreds of sessions that they're managing uh, using an LMS. Um, that didn't give them visibility. It was just very difficult to manage all of the complexities and all of the locations. Uh, so they were really struggling with that. So the solution was to augment that with both a training management system, okay, at the bottom of the pyramid, and then putting their learning experience platform up on top for their learner experience, so their employees that have a better, better experience doing that. So it gave them a, the global view, the big picture of their training operation and everything, that, what was happening around the world, all their instructors, all the resources, they could see what was being used and what was not. Uh, man, help managing the logistics. In the end, they ended up, because they had visibility and they could make good business decisions, they ended up having an 18% cost savings on their budget. So now you can imagine a company with a $10 million budget for ILT, 18% savings, $1.8 million. That's a lot of money to save. So it's quite significant. So that was done through adding the LXP LMS, uh, or the same LMS, and the TRMS, which they used Degreed, uh, which I think Degreed is here, uh, and for, as, for the managed learning journey, aggregating the content and such, uh, using success factors for delivering the e-learning and managing the communication with the learner through the LMS, and then the back end for scheduling um, the logistics resource management and such was, was with training orchestra. To summarize all of this, okay, so do focus on your foundation. When you're building that learning technology stack, make sure you have the right pieces in place. Uh, as I said, it's a very crowded world. So you know, you, obviously you know this. You need to do your research and find that particular piece that's going to work well for you. And when you look at the learning management systems, you know, there's so many different ones, and some are very focused on, you know, there's, I, I, once I know this is focused on healthcare. Another one's focused on, on mining. Uh, you know, and, and all the safety related issues, compliance related issues around mining. There's other ones that are focused on the financial world. Um, so you need to take a good look and find the ones that are right for you. Um, and then, you know, think about the technology stack as a whole and make sure you have all those pieces. So don't use the wrong tools, okay, which uh, obviously they're going to make sense. And then don't forget about that 70% of instructor that train you that uh, you need to, you know, you're spending those dollars, you need to optimize that. So I'd like to just give you just a little bit of information about the company I work for, Training Orchestra. We've been in business now almost 18 years, dedicated to managing instructor-led training. We are a one-product company, and we try to do it very, very, very well. Um, we've got many clients around the world. We touch virtually all industries, probably a little bit more focused in uh, banking, financial services, insurance, also energy and, t and uh, transportation, but we touch all industries. 
And it's a global platform. It's designed to work with multinational companies or deploy anywhere in the world. It is multilingual, multi-currency, multi-time zone. So we can handle pretty much any situation. And that is my presentation. For a copy, please, uh, you can con email contact at training-orchestra.com. Anybody have any questions or comments? All right, well, thank you very much, everyone.